We're all from Adam, and Adam is from the dust. He's from the soil. You will only be successful when you respect those around you. When you realize I'm just one, even though you might be wealthier than a lot of the others, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? When it's your last breath, it's your last breath. You cannot tell Malakul Mot, hey, I've got 300 grand in my bank account. Can you say that? Big deal. Subhanallah, Malakul Mot is not interested in anything. If anything, people will fight over the money that you've left behind and maybe your own children might be at war with each other for decades to come as a result of, I'd rather not have had that. See the point? So don't allow arrogance to creep in your heart in the midst of a good deed. People say, I'm fasting, I go for taraweeh, I go for a good, to a good masjid, I do this, I do that. These guys are useless, they don't do any of that. Hang on. You see what shaitan made you do? He made you feel and think that no, what I'm doing is so valuable. These other guys, their value is zero. Automatically, you got pride. Pride was the main disease of Iblis. Kibr. He had pride. What was Kibr? That pride was the feeling that I am better. The Quran mentions it. What did Iblis say? Straight. I'm sure you understood that most of you, right? He says, I am better than, than him. Why should I offer respect to Adam when I'm better than him? We do that sometimes when we feel we are pious. And then we belittle others. MashaAllah, if Allah gave you the opportunity to fulfill five salah in the masjid, to dress appropriately, to read Quran, to understand the Quran, to attend the lessons, to be able to fast in a proper way, to be able to worship Him in a beautiful way, that should humble you. You must thank Allah for that. Thank Allah, but don't display it to the others to say, what do you guys do? Nothing. Look at what I do. Maybe we might not say it with our tongues, but if you feel it within you, you don't understand. Every football match is judged by the score when the whistle is blown, not before that. You can be as excited as you want for Liverpool to be winning 5 naught. You can be excited as you want if, subhanallah, if the win is not written for them, the other team, by the time the whistle is blown, may win 6-5. Is it not possible? I see the Manchester supporters all said, yes. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. That technology has a good side to it and a very bad side to it as well. There are people earning Jannah through TikTok and there are others earning Jahannam through the same means. Imagine when you die, what would you like there to be? Many of our brothers and sisters, perhaps more so the sisters, they get a lot of excitement by showing themselves on some of these applications without realizing the Prophet Muhammad told us that there will come a time when women will want to expose themselves and they will want to turn heads of people in order to quench the the what may allah grant us goodness may allah protect us from harm the, in order to quench the attention that they are seeking so when you seek attention you do some silly things you semi remove your clothes and you keep shaking your body and you want everyone to say, wow, great, show me more. Let's see, you are leaving a legacy when you die, that video will remain for generations. And where are you? You are with Allah. How did it help you, my sister? How did it help you, my brother? Subhanallah. The Prophet says, The, from the categories of those who will be burning in hellfire, and we, it's important we ma ma mention this hadith. From among the women, those who are clothed with the intention of revealing. Oh, have you heard that? I covered myself with the intention of showing something. What are you showing? Your shape. What else are you showing? Subhanallah, the young boys are speaking. Look. What else are you showing? 
This is a hadith. I'm not talking of my words from my pocket. You are either wearing something too tight or too thin. It is already a prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you are going to leave a legacy. People are going to look at you and follow you. Never mind, your sin might be forgiven, but what about those who kept on following you after your death? We show a cleavage as though it's okay. And we say, thank you so much. When a young man who's not supposed to be looking, and by the way, you should be lowering your gaze, people say, mashallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What legacy are you leaving? And I'm not trying to attack the sisters because the brothers are equally guilty for adding fuel to fire by commenting in a negative way, thinking it's positive. Mashallah, subhanAllah, oh, beautiful. I love it. Excellent, etc. We know what's going on in the world. Our objective with this series is to cover various aspects of a Muslim home so we can all have a blessed home insha'Allah. Starting from who to get married to and how. What are the roles and responsibilities of a husband and wife towards each other and their children? How and when to complement each other? And lastly, your parents and how best to serve them. For the first time ever, we are going to enable every one of you to learn all about how to achieve a blessed home from Quran and Sunnah with a single click in your own language in state-of-the-art courses, inshallah. The series will consist of 2,000 episodes covering in detail in three to seven minute videos using state-of-the-art animations paired with groundbreaking detailed work. This series is a collaboration with free Quran education. The series will be made available in all major languages of the world, inshallah. Now who will benefit from this? Every single person with internet connection will be able to benefit from the series as long as the internet lasts, inshallah. Becoming a source of everlasting constant sadaqa jariya for everyone who contributes and makes the series a reality by the will of Allah. My brothers and sisters, people say, I love you, and they don't mean it. That is happening more and more often. Sometimes we claim to love Allah, but do we mean it? Yes, we are the creatures of Allah. We have to love our maker. So Allah says, well, I'm going to show you how to prove your love to me and how to earn my love. So if I say, I love you, O Allah, I love Allah, I love my maker. How should I show that? I mean, I wouldn't ever like someone to tell me I love you and then do everything against what I want or what would make me happy. Imagine someone tells you, I really love you, but they're hurting you all the time. They're going against what would make you happy. They're doing things that would make you sad, upset or angry. Is that love? Subhanallah. That's just a statement. I love you. You need to be true even if you haven't uttered that statement. So Allah says, you claim to love Allah. Well, we want to show you, follow our messenger. We sent you a messenger. We told you to follow the messenger. Follow him and in return, I will love you too. Subhanallah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Verse number 31 of Surah Ali Imran. Allah says, Tell them, O Messenger, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, and Allah will love you. And on top of that, He will forgive your sins. For indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah says, If you really love Allah, follow the Messenger. And if you're really trying your best to follow the Messenger, Allah will love you and He's going to forgive your sins knowing that you may not be able to be perfect because you're just a human being. But the fact that you are trying and you continue trying and whenever you faltered, you keep coming back on the path and you keep trying again and again, Allah says, we're going to forgive you because Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful.